Hello everybody, this is Jim Ransom with another edition of Morning Jim Poetry. And um, today being um, uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, we're going to read some poems by Irish poets. <clears throat> Not all the poems are going to be by those people, but several of them are. And we're going to start with probably the mo most famous of all the Irish poets, William Butler Yeats, W.B. Yeats. And here's one that I've read many times, and it's one of his best short poems. It's called The Lake Isle of Innisfree. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree, and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the vales of the morning to where the cricket sings. There, midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, an evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Isn't that a beautiful poem? And it's kind of <clears throat> typical of the lyricism <clears throat> of W.B. Yeats. Now, a much more modern um, Irish poet is Seamus Haney. I'm sure many of you have, have read some of his stuff, and it's also great. <clears throat> this one is called Scaffolding. <clears throat> Scaffolding by Sh Seamus Haney. Masons, when they start upon a building, are careful to test out the scaffolding, make sure that planks won't slip at dizzy points, secure all ladders, tighten bolted joints, and yet all this comes down when the job's done. Showing off walls of sure and solid stone. So, if, my dear, there sometimes seem to be old bridges creaking and breaking between you and me, never fear. We may let the scaffolds fall, confident that we have built our wall. <laughs> that poem has some great irony in it, doesn't it? Um, Seamus Haney. <clears throat> now here's <clears throat> a poem by another poet um, of Irish heritage, at least, whose name is Galway Canal. Really a beautiful Irish name. Galway Canal, and it's entitled St. Francis and the Sow. It's from a wonderful book called Poetry 180, uh, Turning Back to Poetry by none other than Billy Collins. <clears throat> he, he, of course, did not write all these poems, but he, he collected them in this wonderful book called... Uh, Poetry 180. <clears throat> All right. St. Francis in the Sow. The bud stands for all things, even those things that don't flower, for everything flowers from within of self-blessing. Though sometimes it is necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness and put a hand on its brow of the flower, and retell it in words and in touch. It is lovely. 
until it flowers again from within of self-blessing. As St. Francis put his hand on the creased forehead of the sow and told her in words and in touch blessings of earth on the sow, and the sow began remembering all down her thick length, from the earthen snout all the way through the fodder and slops to the spiritual curl of the tail, from the hard spininess spiked out from the spine, down through the great broken heart to the blue milk and dreaminess spurting and shuddering from the fourteen teats into the fourteen mouths sucking and blowing beneath them the long, perfect loveliness of sow. I think that's a beautiful poem by Galway Canal. Well, those Irish poets <clears throat> are, are hard to beat, but um, <clears throat> here's a poet by John, a poem by John Barr, and I, I loved it because as an allergist in another life, I had a lot to think about and, and do about spores, spores. And this poem is called Season of Spores. It's by John Barr, and he might be Irish, but I'm not going to claim it. <clears throat> One rain and they appear. Along the trails, Tranquil Bluff, Krogan, Juniper, a cadence of feeding on the forest floor. The scatter of moon-colored stuff erupts from the mire, unfurls a bric-a-brac of fluke and rough, lavender cap, topiary puff, but no morals. This field of mortal fruit Battens on decomposing soils is only good for witches' spells and fun. Architects of the minute, a fleet of tiny galleons sails. A solitary minaret warns the faithless of their fate. All rubbery flesh and radial gills so alien to what we know. They are strange to the kingdom of chlorophyll as marsupial is to, Anna, to mammal. We call out their colors, gambage, acru, give them lofty airs, whose woods these are, they think they know. But what they do and do with it a will is grow outriders from a parallel universe. Forgers, reconnoiterers. Season of Spores by John Barr. That is a marvelous and well-written uh, poem. It's one of those poems that one wishes one had written, uh, but I didn't. Now, <clears throat> we'll have to take a little break from the Irish and read a poem from um, an interesting book that somebody sent me a while back. It's called <clears throat> The Wild Fox of Yemen, or Yemen. I'm not quite sure how the Yemenese pronounce that, but I think it's Yemen. And it's poems by Threa Almontaser. Threa Almontaser. She's an American poet, winner of the Walt Whitman Award of the Academy of American Poets a few years back. <clears throat> and this is an entire book by a Yemeni American author. You can see her picture. Um, I think she's a Muslim, but that's all right. <clears throat> if Muslims want to write English poetry, 
Let them have at it, I say. This is a well done um, poem, and it's called <clears throat> When White Boys Ask to See My Hair. My hair is not taking any visitors right now. My hair was used as a banner on the moon. My hair is belly dancing on an auntie's tabletop. My hair fell off the long line on Mount Everest, trying to make a selfie. My hair is flipping off an ice raider after he barges into her favorite deli, arresting her neighbors. My hair is Medusa's second cousin. The strands slithering along your throat. Avert your gaze for your own good. My hair was captured by the exotic Manu wilderness and caged for a popular circus show. My hair is ducking beneath a desk, trying to recall the drills, the math sheets falling in a white rain. My hair escaped an arranged marriage to sail the Red Sea with a crew of burly pirates. She is busily battling maritime brigands and trying not to get lost. My hair is under siege in Yemen, her home recently bombed, her children buried under the rubble. I am not entirely sure if she will make it out alive. My hair was abducted by aliens. Rumor has it they spun her into a star. That might be her there, winking down at you. My hair was mauled on a Tanzanian safari. I found a few leftover curls flossed between a caracal's fangs. My hair joined a deep-rooted Bedouin tribe. She enjoys feeding nomadic camels from her palm, became the sheikh's third wife, and sings ancient poetry into campfires. She is happy. I don't think she is coming back. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> The name of that again is When White Boys Asked to See My Hair. <laughs> they got quite a story, didn't they, about her hair. And of course, her hair remains quite secretive under the uh, Muslim uh, mantle, covered, well covered. So that's it for today. <clears throat> Irish poetry and the poetry of Threya Almontaser from The Wild Fox of Yemen. An interesting book. I may read you some other poems from it later on, but not today. Time is running out. Bye now.